Welcome back. Okay, before we go any farther, you've used the word polyp. What exactly, for those that don't know, what exactly is a polyp? It's an abnormal collection of tissues. It's like a pimple on the lining of your colon. If you have something that's seven millimeters above in Do, in do the, most people have those? I mean, is that um, a common occurrence? One, in a, in a normal non, in a normal low risk population, there'll be one in 10 or about 10%. And then those, as they grow, if they get larger than seven to 10 millimeters, can become cancers. Can become cancers. If you have something like that in the breast of a loved one or in your lung, you may already have a virulent disease okay, that you might survive. If you have something like that in the lining of your colon, you have five to 10 years to find it and get it out before it becomes uh, a danger to you. So, so the, a, the growth is very slow. Growth is very slow and we have a precious window of opportunity that is not being taken advantage of. We're here today, we're talking about virtual call and especially you've designed software and I, everybody's seen the fly through where they fly through the colon and they do. You've actually designed software that takes the colon, splits it and flattens it out for even easier examination. Well, if you use the fly through, you have to fly through each data set in both directions. So that's four fly throughs and it takes an experienced examiner uh, 20 to 40 minutes to do that. If you use the more popular 2D approach where you look at all of the images, you're looking at a couple of thousand images for each data set. Again, 20 to 40 minutes. What we've done is we've taken the long curved air-filled colon, we've mathematically straightened it, we've, uh, been able to, we've been able to slit it open and open it up and fly over it like a video game, potentially allowing us to identify normal cases in massive numbers in 90 seconds or less. Okay. With the virtual, and I want to get into the scopes, because I will tell you again, I've had all of them. I've had a barium enema, I've had the, 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 the rigid scope, and I've had the, the colonoscopy. This is, a, this is the rigid scope. This is a, a rigid, disposable, plastic sigmoidoscope, which probably gets a third to 40% of the colon, the lower end of the colon. Okay, and that they just basically... This is what you described to me first happened to you when you were 13 years yes, old. Yes, they just basically blew air and shoved the thing in it went. And the other, the other alternative, the gold standard, is the fiber optic telescope, which is two meters long. Now they put this in its entirety all the way up inside of you. That's right. Six this, feet. This is the, that's right. The first 15 to 20 minutes of the exam is to get to the upper end of the colon. The they don't look going one. in. Uh, they don't look going in by and large. And so this thing is able to turn corners with its controls. It has a light source on the end. You can put surgical s instruments and snares through it to grab polyps. But I just want everybody to see how long it is. It, I'm sure that the viewers are looking and seeing how long it is. You're knocked out so you don't know how long it is. Why do they knock you out? Because uh, it's painful. Going around some of the corners uh, is tough. Now, now and, and we've had this discussion and you try to downplay this, but this is a huge fear of mine when they did it. Is it possible this can puncture the wall of the colon? Uh, occasionally with this exam, especially in uh, friable colons, uh, delicate colons, yeah. Uh, if they've overinflated them uh, or if they push too hard. Uh, it's rare, but and it I, is I, a complication. I, I, I went to the Mayo Clinic's website and noticed that they recommend, if you're going to have one of these done, that you stop any kind of blood thinning medicine at least a week prior to getting it done. Is that because there's a chance of bleeding? Yes. Okay, now we're going to move on to my favorite, which I've just discovered is my newest favorite, which is the virtual. All they put was a little tube and air. Is, right. that, is that the standard? Uh, the standard, if you have good sphincter control, uh, and if you well, don't you, over... Uh, you, they, they do if you have the little bubble, yeah, which I you, prefer. You, they you, put you, the little bubble. You have one that's slightly larger that's got a little bubble that keeps it from popping out. Um, In, inflate the colon with air. I was on the table for... Well, in your situation, uh, you were amazed that it was all over with in 14 minutes. I'm sure we, and the scan time on your back and on your stomach was, like you said, about 20 seconds each. And you, not us, had control no, over I, the I, inflation. I, it was my, it was my, and I, I wanted to see if I would put in the same amount of air the doctor would put in, and right. obviously I put in way more than he did, but that went up. And I gave it some pumps on this. Well, the normal number of pumps is, is, is 25 to 40. Right. You're a big guy, so we would have expected you to get to 50. I think you told me you got to 75. Yeah. And your colon was unbelievably inflated. And it was, it, the thing, it was, was there a little pressure? Yeah, there was a little pressure, but nothing worse than I've had when after you, a meal When sometimes. you were in the process of rolling over to get on your tummy, 
Okay, you stop for just about 10 or 15 seconds, and we ask you, you know, are you just, I'm having just a little cramp. A little bit of cramp, it, it and, the air, away. and the air went through, and I went right on over. Yep. Okay, well, would you like to see what you look like inflated? Well, I, I'm going to want to see that, but now, you put them on the table. I, I'm just asking, is my experience normal? I mean, because I can't imagine in my head, and obviously I didn't know what it was before, but I can't imagine that if I could go and find out if I, and obviously I don't, thank you very much, but had polyps had anything without having to go through that scope, there would be no reason I wouldn't go do it. I can tell you with that scope, there was a hundred reasons you and I talked about that. That's one of the reasons I wanted to interview you, that I didn't think that in today's society with all the information we had, that's barbaric to me. Now, obviously, if you have to have a polyp removed. There is no better way than the fiber optic colonoscope to have that thing taken out. Right, but my point was, and, and, it's, and of course, I, I think a little different than everybody else, but if I went and had a virtual and I found out that I had a 10 millimeter polyp that had to be removed. And it was only and a it was, little ways up. It was eight inches inside of me. They could go in and remove it. Yeah. With the scope, they would have to go all the way six feet through. And I don't know if everybody knows just how curvy the bowel can be. My personal is, is very curvy. You, you made mention of that. But they would have to go all the way through six feet and then come back and then find that, that polyp 10 inches before they came out. You're, uh, you're exaggerating just a little bit. It's not six feet, it's well, closer to four, but it looks like it's six feet. Well, it scares and, me to death. And, and yes, your colon was a little bit curvy. So, but I went through nothing different. You didn't do anything special no, for me. No, nothing. The, 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 the preparation, very simple, very easy to do. That is the standard that people go through. Yes. Nothing. What, what is not standard, which you put your finger on is, you made the observation, well, if somebody wants to come up and twist the, right. the hair you're on the Right, you control your own pain. Yeah, if you're in, con and so you insisted on being in control of your own I didn't want to put that in because I, I, I wanted to make sure that I got nothing different than anybody else with well, it. You didn't do anything special for me because you, I asked you to come and do this interview with me. No, you, 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 you uh, puffed yourself up better than most people would allow a doctor to puff themselves up. So Okay, now, I know you've been dying to show me. I haven't seen it yet. Show me mine. Michael, this is you. It's life size. This is your inflated colon. This is the rectal end. This is the sigmoid portion of the colon, backwards this way. Tight turn right here. A lot of people come straight across, so this isn't quite as tight a turn. This is called the transverse portion of the colon, and this, all the way over to here. This is, that is where normally, and obviously I didn't go through it this time because I had the virtual, but normally that is where no, they no, would... Normally they spend the first 10 or 15 minutes getting the scope to here so they can begin to look at the colon pulling out. And they is that get, why they basically knock you out when they do it? Well, coming around the corners is tough. Is there, and is there a, a chance of perforation? A uh, small chance of perforation. Now, and on mine, that was about it. That was it. About that far, a little bit of air? Yep. And you were able to get that picture and see that. And we have a lot of other images of other portions of the abdomen, a couple of things in your kidneys. Okay, we're going to get to that when we come back. I want to have you explain all the other stuff to me. We're in studio with Dr. Glenn. We're talking about virtual colonoscopy. We need to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the other organs and what you can see that you can't see with a standard scope. Stick around, we'll be right back.